Big things are happening on the rails. After years of frustration with outdated infrastructure, Amtrak is finally turning the corner. The arrow is coming, the high-speed Acela is on the horizon, and upgrades are underway. But with all this innovation, one question remains. Can the infrastructure keep up? Join us as we uncover the answers in today's episode of Great Train Speed. Big news, Amtrak just had its best year ever. In fiscal year 24, more than 32.8 million people rode the train. That's an all-time record, and Amtrak matched that demand with a massive $4.5 billion push into tracks, stations, tunnels, bridges, and new trains. It's the biggest construction wave in the company's history, putting thousands of skilled Americans to work and jump-starting U.S. rail manufacturing. So what changes for you as a rider? First, the new trains. The Aerofleet is rolling out on routes like Cascades with brighter interiors, bigger windows, quieter rides, better accessibility, and a calmer experience end to end. On the Northeast Corridor, the next gen Acela, or called Avelia Liberty, brings modern aerodynamics, refined interiors, and tech designed for consistent high-speed performance. There's an economic and sustainability upside as well, these projects support union jobs, retool U.S. factories, and rebuild domestic rail supply chains. And as the fleet gets cleaner and more efficient, riding the train becomes an even smarter, low-carbon choice without sacrificing convenience. Next up, we're breaking down what's coming route by route, and how these upgrades could shave minutes off your trip or make that weekend getaway way easier. If this is your kind of update, tap subscribe so you don't miss the update. Everything about trains is right here on Great Train Speed. Two new trains, Amtrak's Aero and the next generation Acela for high-speed premium service, form the twin pillars of Amtrak's future. Together, they symbolize a once-in-a-generation reinvestment to make the country's busiest rail corridor faster, cleaner, and more dependable. But no fleet can meet its potential without modern facilities behind it. To that end, Amtrak's NEC infrastructure and capital delivery teams are rolling out a corridor-wide overhaul of its maintenance yards, each one tailored to support both Aero and Liberty. The result is a coordinated network of high-capacity pit lanes that turn trains faster, maintain them more efficiently, and extend the lifespan of costly rolling stock. In Boston, the $583 million Southampton Yard program leads the way, managed under a design-build partnership between SPS New England and Railroad Construction Company. It's the prototype of how Amtrak intends to modernize while keeping service live. Construction is phased, so trains continue to cycle through as crews add a new two-track maintenance and inspection M&I building and convert the existing regional shop into a dedicated service and cleaning hall. The concept mirrors an automotive pit stop, multiple tracks, modular tooling, and on-site parts storage to minimize downtime. Once complete in 2029, Boston South Station will see shorter layovers, cleaner sets, and steadier departures, benefiting both Aero and Acela formations, linking New England to New York, Philadelphia, and beyond. Farther south, Queen's Sunnyside Yard, one of North America's largest rail facilities, is undergoing its own transformation through 2030 under the scalamandre sitnalta joint venture. The focus here is flow. A new two-track M&I building will handle routine inspections and minor corrective work, while six covered service and cleaning tracks shield crews from weather extremes. The yard's commissary, parts storage, and employee workspaces are being consolidated into a modular complex for efficiency. 11 service platforms are being restored to full function, and two major interlockings plus NEC lead tracks are being reconfigured to reduce congestion. These geometric and signal upgrades may sound subtle, but they're crucial. After all, they unlock more dependable departure slots for both Aero and Acela sets, operating to and from Albany, Boston, Chicago, Washington, and even long distance connections southward to Richmond, Raleigh, Charlotte, Miami, and New Orleans. At the southern end, Washington's Ivy City Yard, Amtrak's principal service base for the capital region, is being rebuilt by Clark Herzog. 
The modernization adds three canopy covered service and cleaning tracks and upgrades two existing two track maintenance buildings with state of the art lifts, overhead cranes, and safety systems. A new drop table reduces heavy truck and wheel set replacement from multi day tasks to a matter of hours, while yard wide water main replacements allow multiple train sets to be provisioned simultaneously. Work is carefully phased, so Ivy City remains operational, with completion targeted for 2030. At Philadelphia's Pencoach Yard, a $462 million program led by Herzog will consolidate several scattered shops into one 350,000 square foot heavy maintenance complex, equipped with full length pits, drop tables, fueling pads, and a direct fixation track for precision alignment, the facility will dramatically raise throughput and reliability. New retaining walls, utility relocations, and catenary structures ensure future compatibility with electric operations. Scheduled to open in 2027, the hub will anchor Amtrak's central region and cut failure to start incidents before trains even leave the yard. In Seattle, King Street Yard, home to Cascades and Long Distance Services, is receiving a $300 million PCL construction-led overhaul. It's a nearly 100,000 square foot pre-engineered building that features standardized bays, overhead lifts, and optimized workflows that let multiple aero consists move through at once. By synchronizing designs and part standards between coasts, Amtrak creates economies of scale that strengthen training, spare parts logistics, and uptime for the entire national network. Finally, in Rensselaer, Albany, Concept Design is advancing for two new M&I tracks and three service and cleaning tracks with canopy coverage and smart utility routing. This Empire service node is tightly connected to the NEC and its modernization ensures that trains feeding into New York and Boston can be turned and serviced as efficiently as their corridor counterparts. A design award is expected later this year. When the full program matures by decade's end, passengers will see the difference not just in minutes saved, but in confidence gained, consistent departures, fewer breakdowns, quieter rides, and cleaner train sets that feel worthy of the 21st century. The Northeast Corridor has always been America's flagship railway. The Arrow and Acela Liberty era is its long overdue refit, pairing modern hardware with the infrastructure that keeps it ready every morning. From Boston Southampton to Washington's Ivy City, the message is the same. Reliable rail begins in the yard, but its payoff runs the full 457 miles of the corridor. Quite promising, right? We're hearing a lot of optimism from manufacturers and the government, but promises don't move trains. Projects do. Do these upgrades feel worth it to you? One equals necessary, zero equals not convinced. Drop your take below. Amtrak's yard and fleet upgrades aren't happening in isolation because they're the result of a durable coalition that runs from the White House to state capitals and down to the shop floor. President Roger Harris puts it plainly, strong backing from the Trump Administration Congress and many others is what's clearing the way for aero trains to begin Northeast Corridor service in 2027. Governors are sinking the ground game. Massachusetts' Maura Healy situates Southampton Yard within a broader push for more rail choices and less highway congestion. New Jersey's Phil Murphy connects Sunnyside improvements to fewer breakdowns and better amenities. And in Virginia, VPRA's DJ Statler links facility work to the transforming rail in Virginia plan. So added tracks and modern shops move forward together. Advocates are keeping the focus on execution Rail Passengers Association CEO Jim Matthews notes that shiny coaches alone don't deliver on-time performance. You need shops, parts, processes, and people funded year after year, which is why heavy maintenance hubs in Philadelphia and Seattle are advancing in parallel with NEC yard upgrades. For riders, the outcome is tangible. Clearer timetables, cleaner trains, faster turns in service and cleaning halls, and more seats where demand is strongest. For workers and manufacturers, it means steady project pipelines, union jobs, and domestic supply chains tooling up around real orders. For cities and the climate, it means shifting trips off highways and short haul flights to lower carbon rail without sacrificing convenience. 
After all, this is effective government relations in motion, federal dollars aligned with state priorities, private partners under contract, and watchdogs focused on results. If it stays on track, the payoff is straightforward. More reliable service, modern rolling stock, and a network ready to handle record demand for decades. And as you want to know more about how these yard investments translate into on-time performance, we can break that down next. That's a wrap for today's run. If you enjoyed the ride, hit follow, and we'll catch the next signal together. Until then, stay safe and ride smart.